before you touch a switch, you know what to expect. That's how you know system. That's, that's when you actually know that you know your system. When you expect something to see from a system before you touch it. You know what I'm saying? All right, drive light. Oh, no, no, wait a minute, let's go, whoa, whoa. We got the auto, we got the off, and we have the back. Remember the back position or the battery position? All we're doing is we're manually connecting the battery to the standby buses. That's all you do. On the NG, remember, in the standby power switching auto works on the ground and in flight. Okay, either way. Okay, so thank God. Good for us. All right. Drive line. Drive line for the IDG compared to the CSD on the class. IDG, integrated driven generator. What Boeing did is they actually mix the CSD with the generator. They put it together. It's integrated. So now it's called IDG, okay? We still have that CSD maintaining constant speed so the generator can still produce frequency and voltage. That's the only thing, but it's integrated now instead of separated completely and through a shaft is connected. Now it's integrated. It does the same thing. The only thing that both now integrated instead of separate, all right? Now, we're gonna have, <clears throat> okay? We don't have any more the indicators remember we used to have the indicator for the rice and all this stuff right we don't have that anymore right why because everything is monitored right here on the drive line that drive line is telling you when your generator is working it's overworking right it's telling you that the, you have a low oil pressure or high oil temperature or it's telling you that the engine is not running or that the cs or the i'm sorry or that the idg is actually disconnected automatically or that the idg is manually disconnected this drive tells you all kind of stuff, man. all kind of stuff, right? If the drive light comes on, what is that telling you? Well, if I ask you that question, there is few ways that you can answer. Depending how you answer, he maybe, maybe he not even know what the hell you're saying, right? Because remember this drive light, it's normal to see the drive light if the engine is not running. It's normal to, it's normal to see it because the CSD is not turning. Right, everything, the engine is shut down. There's no oil pressure, so it's normal to see. Once you crank that engine, you start building oil pressure, everything is working, CSD, generator, everything goes together, that drive should go off, right? So it is normal to see the drive light when the engine is not running. Good. What other way can I see that drive light to come on? Well, if you have low oil pressure or high oil temperature, that drive light will come on. Any other way to see that drive light? Yes. If the IDG disconnect automatically, that drive light will come on, okay? Now, it's gonna come on, but now you're gonna say, well, why do the IDG disconnect automatically? Well, because you have high oil temperature, okay? So it's already disconnected, yes? And how do you know? How do you know that the IDG disconnected automatically? You see? Because the drive light, means a lot of stuff. Low oil pressure, high oil temperature, the engine is not running, the engine is running, but the IDG disconnect automatically, or that the engine <coughs> was running and you disconnected manually with the switch here, then the drive light comes on to let you know that you disconnected. Look at how many stuff you have with that drive light now. So if the IDG disconnect automatically because you have high oil temperature, how do you know? Because the light came on because you have high oil temperature on the, CS on the IDG or low oil pressure. And it disconnected automatically by himself. So how do you know you disconnected? Well, because when you go to the AC selector and you select generator, let's assume it's number one, and you select generator number one, now you don't have no frequency and voltage. It will be zero. Because the CSD is already disconnected from the generator. So you don't have anybody, you don't have no CSD maintaining constant speed, so the generator can produce frequency and voltage. So that's how you know the ITG is disconnected automatically, by checking frequency and voltage. Make sense? That's the only way you should know this. You have to know this because now it changed. In the classic, it was easier. Here, because it does it automatically for you, it's gonna help you out, but you need to know when that happened. How do you know if it actually disconnect automatically? Because it doesn't disconnect automatically, you have to do it manually. How do you do it manually? Well, by going now to the red guard switch, a disconnect switch, right? You open the guard, you hold it for three to five seconds, 
when to the IDGs disconnect. How do you know when the IDGs actually disconnected? The same thing. Before you select the disconnect switch, you select, you have to select on the AC selector meter, the generator that you are going to disconnect so you can check frequency and voltage. Select generator number one, open the guard, hold the 35 seconds, monitor your frequency right there, zero, good, it's already disconnected. That's a true statement when the IDG is disconnected. Then after that, you can tell me, or I can ask you, do you have any other way to find out when an IDG is disconnected? Yes. But the true meaning of an IDG disconnect or a CSD disconnected from the generator is by checking only the frequency and the voltage. Then after that, you can come down here and tell me that the generator break is open because it's true. But this is not a true statement because the generator can the generator breaker can open for under speed, over speed, when it says short on the circuit, that can trip the generator breaker. Actually tripping the generator control free, free relay inside the GCU tripping the generator breaker. Now it is a true statement that when the IDG is disconnect, the GB is gonna be open, so the blue light is gonna be on, the source of light is gonna be on, and the trumpet bus is gonna be off. That's true. Because a lot of time when I when when we in the pre-orals or when we're doing orals, we ask them, hey, if you need to disconnect number one CSD, let me give you the answer because you have high oil temperature, drive light is on, and you need to disconnect it manually. It didn't disconnect automatically. Let me help you out here. I'm gonna give you 70% of your answer. All I want to know is one thing. If you need to disconnect number one IDG, how, how would you do that? Other than, of course, follow your QRH. But I just want to make sure you know exactly what, you, what you're doing, what you're looking for. Some people say, well, they just go direct to the switch. Right? Oh, I opened the disconnect switch and I hold that cell. I said, he already fucked up. Now I'm going to ask him another question. Because I don't know if he knows that the IDG is disconnect. Because the first thing you should say is, before going here to the disconnect switch is, I select the generator that I'm going to disconnect. Once you, once you tell me this, I, then I, 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 you know, I tell myself, he already know the system. Because why he's selecting the generator that he's going to disconnect is because he want to monitor frequency and voltage. You see, so I'm not going to ask you another question. Hey, how do you disconnect the, the, the IDG? Most of you guys, the majority, the first thing they say is, oh, I go to the disconnect, red guard switch it, open up, hold it for 35 seconds, and it's disconnect. Then I say, well, unfortunately, I have to ask you another question. So how do you know that it's disconnect? And then they come down here. Oh, the generator of bus light is on. I say, that's not true. Well, let me go back. And this is the way I play the game. I say, well, it is true, but it's not true. And I'm going to explain to you in a minute. It is true, but it's not true. Why? Because that generator breaker can open for under speed, over speed. It not necessarily has to open because you disconnect it, but it's true that it's going to be open. I want to make sure you understand that. It is true what you're saying, but it's not a good answer. Give me that answer later. You see what I'm saying? The first thing is by checking frequency and voltage, and then you can tell me about the GP. Now it makes sense. Yes, the generator bus light will be on. The source of light will be on, transfer bus will be off. The drive light is gonna be on, but that's already on anyway, because the first thing the drive light came on is because you had high oil temperature on the IDG. That's the reason. The only thing is, how do you know? That's why this is very critical on the NG. How do you know that it's not disconnected automatically? Because Boeing says that the IDG can be disconnected automatically or manually. What do you mean automatically? Yeah, that can disconnect automatically by himself. As soon as the IDG know that he has a high oil temperature, so he can save that engine, that generator, he's going to disconnect automatically by himself. So how do you know? Well, by selecting in the AC selector, the generator that has the drive light on, friction and both is zero, you know that it's already disconnected. Simple as that. You see, it did it automatically. That's how you know when it's automatically disconnected. Or if you're still reading frequency, then you're going to have to do it manually. Because the drive light, the only thing is telling you right now in this scenario is that you have high oil temperature or low oil pressure. Make sense? Good. Very nice. 